Our dear viewers and listeners, we greet you all in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad. In it. As we begin today's Bible study, invite somebody to join us for this wonderful session. And as we begin, let's bow our heads and dedicate this session to God in prayer. Let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you yes, Lord. for the cleansing effect of your word. Yes, Lord. We yield to your spirit. Yes, Speak through us. Yes, Change our hearts. Mm -hmm. Open our eyes yes, to see your love, mm -hmm. your grace, yes, your peace, yes, and your salvation yes, to the praise and glory mm -hmm. of your name, yes, Jesus. Amen. 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 We'll be taking our reading today. Amen from the book of Romans chapter 1 from verse 7 to verse 15 let's read to all who are in Rome beloved of God called to be saints grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers making request if by some means now at last I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. That is, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. Now, I, w I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often plan to come to you, but was hindered until now, that I may have some fruit among you, just as among the other Gentiles. I am a debtor both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to unwise, so as much as is in me. I'm ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. We bless the Lord for his word. In this letter that is almost autobiographical, a very personal letter that Paul wrote, there is so much that speaks to to him as an individual. In the text that we just read, more than 15 times, we see him use the first person pronouns, I, me, my. What is it that we pick from here? It is as if Paul wants us to see what is in his heart. And if we take it from another reading, which is 1 Corinthians, 
chapter 11 and verse 1. Why he tells us, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Here he unveils his heart to us. In a way of us speaking from what he wants us to understand. What a servant's heart looks like. And I mean a servant of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He begins by saying to all who are in Rome, beloved of the Lord, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Here we find Paul's signature in terms of his greeting. But I want us to break it down. Remember, he is talking to a people, a church he did not found. He is writing to a community. Most of whose members he had not met. Yet when he addresses them, he refers to them as the beloved of God. He refers to them not from the lens of what other people are saying about them. He refers to them based on the way God views them. Which is the beloved of God. And that provides us with a very important lesson. Because many times today, we look at people based on how they look on on what they are on the outside. And we forget that the scripture says that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellence of power may be of God and not of us. Basically, we are obsessed with the container. And we forget that there is the content within the container from which it springs the excellence of power. And it is against that that Paul addresses the church in Rome. And says, Beloved of the Lord, called to be saints. Now I want us to eliminate the word to be. Because in the original Greek language, we don't have those, that word. So it is supposed to read called saints. Now, this is something very interesting. Because we have a misconception in the world today <clears throat> that for somebody to be called a saint, you have to first die physically. That is not the case. Because here Paul, one Paul is writing to living people. People who are alive in Rome at the time. And he says, Beloved of the Lord, called saints. He's making the reference to them as saints to drive home the point that sainthood is not restricted to those who are dead. Sainthood is not an award that is given to dead people. A saint is not somebody who is dead and has been exalted by a certain body. No, a saint is a believer who is alive right now and exalting Jesus Christ as Lord 
Savior. So we who are alive today and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. According to this text, are called saints. And then he goes on to say, Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I want us to note the order. He never says peace and grace. He begins with grace and then adds peace. Because you never find God's peace until you find His grace. It is His grace that draws you and brings you to the place of His peace. So whoever is out there and has no peace, peace is not what the world can give you. Peace is not the absence of conflict. Peace is what you find when the grace of God fills your heart. When you find God's grace, there in God's grace, God's peace abounds. And as Paul goes deeper, Paul now reveals to us what characterizes a servant of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And here he paints the picture. In verse 8 he begins, by saying, first I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Let's look at the first bit. Here Paul opens with a theme of thanksgiving. Remember he had never been to Rome. When he begins to write, he's writing to a body of believers. And he commends them because their faith is spoken of throughout the world. What they are known for is their faith. You see, today we have the wrong focus on the wrong priorities. Many of us are obsessed with the charisma. And I don't say charisma is not good. But that's not the priority. We want to be known by the big parking lots. Whereas it is good for believers to have transportation, that is not the focus. That's not the priority. We want to be known by the big choirs that we have. Yes, it is good to have good choirs. But again, that is not the priority. When Paul commends this church, he says what is spoken of you throughout the Roman Empire is your faith in Jesus Christ. That is what she characterizes. He addresses them as fellow believers. He begins by commending them for their, body, for their faith. That is what they were reputed for. What is it that you are reputed for? What is it that you are people should thank God for. When Paul was addressing the church, he thanks God for them 
kulwabwe and for their faith no lwokukiriza kwe balina and that is wonderful echo kirungi because many times when we look at other people when we look at other fellow christians we say abinji that dalu mukutunulira abakristayo banafe we want to point out what is not working well bo soka kunonye buzibu we biri church takola it is not that the church in rome did not have its faults see the kanisa ya rome it ya ina buzibu the community had a lot of issues eh before we be ali mwe buzibu binji There, were, there was a lot of pornography there was a lot of promiscuity going on mwali mo obse guno bwezi wonna romans were unknown for idolatry abalumi baba manyiko chimo ruo kusinze bifana but paul is not addressing that necho paul tachi wa bude he says i thank god for you yaga bakatonda mwe bazakuluwa mwe the heart the message here is obubaka bwaisa the heart of the preacher of the gospel of jesus christ omutima gwo mubuli is the angel of Jesus Christ the servant of the gospel of Jesus Christ where mutima go mwereza we angel of Jesus Christ be a thankful heart o mutima ogwe bazanga when he later comes to us in first Thessalonians era mba Thessalonica kisoka chapter 5 and verse 18 so ya kutano 10 na 8 and says give thanks in all circumstances titwe bazenga mu mbera zonna so this is god's will kuno kwe kwagala kwa katonda for you in Christ Jesus e kulwa mwe mu Kristo Yesu I have often met people who ask what is the will of God since kanya abantu gabavuza ne katondo kwagala kwe kwe kuliwa well this is where it begins otandikira wano what God's will for you and I okwagala kwe kwa katondo eri kwe na that we give thanks titwe bazenga in all circumstances mu mbera zonna that is where it begins otandikira with a heart that gives thanks o mutimo gwe bazanga which brings us to a question that we need to ask ourselves in light of where we are ask yourself am i giving thanks in all things am i a grateful person i know many of us feel thankful bangi tulira tusima twebaza for a lot of things era mu bintu bingi go around us nadale bitwetolode feeling thankful na yo okulira ngo webaza and giving thanks no kuwa yo kwebaza ko at two different things ebyo byanja it is okay to feel thankful kirungi okubera no mtu nga webaza we should move from feeling thankful never mu dale yo kulira ntu webaza we yanziza to the next level of giving thanks yambuka kudale eliyo kuwo kwebaza you say giving thanks is expressing okuwo kwebaza chintu chola chichikolwa giving thanks okuwo kwebaza is extending kwe kuongera it moves from you chiva kugwe and then you are extending that thanks katokwebaza oko no kutwala walala we should have that as an attitude attitude you to a fuke mbala ya fi a thankful person omundo eyebaza has an attitude of gratitude abena ne mbalo bendo oze yo kusima you look for things to thank god for ono nya buli chinto ko kufuna esonga lachi webaza mukamba and that should be the attitude we have eye fukendo oza yo the second attitude that we should have and there was a yoku je tutekedwa kubana yo as servants of the gospel of our lord jesus christ ngaba were za evangelium ya mkabo wa is what we find in verse 9 utsanga musule yo mulinyi yo lo mwenda here paul right paul want he says for god is my witness chikatonda ye mujulira kwa i serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son wepeleza mu moyo kwange mu njiri yo mwana we that without ceasing ji obutamala i make mention of you always in my prayers bogera konyo ne mukusala zange here paul is stressing the point paul anyweze so in verse 9 he says i make mention of you always in my prayers munyero mwenda anti mbasabira nyo obutakoma the message is praying at all times obubaka anti mbasabira ebisera byonna you say when we hear the word praying at all times what would it come about to save ebisera byonna praying without ceasing or what to save obutakowa the whole idea to many people is misunderstood abamu endo was a see and do because to many people 
Abasinga. Prayer is an act. Sale, chikolwa, chikolwa. And I don't deny that it is an act. Siganya chino kuba chikolwa. But prayer is more than an act of bowing down your head and closing your eyes. Ne sale sukurume kuchikolwe jo kufunda mumutego galewa masoko. Getting on your knees. Obo gende kuba vivi. For people who really know the Lord Jesus Christ, prayer is not just an act. Prayer is a constant attitude that we have. It is, it is not a religious ritual that you go through. No, no, no. Prayer is a part of an ongoing relationship that we have with God. It becomes natural to us. Like we breathe or we eat. So, you see, you should always live your life as a believer in constant communion with the Lord Jesus Christ. And you say, how can that be possible? I'll paint the picture for you. Paul tells us in Philippians 4 and verse 6, he says, be anxious about nothing, but in everything by prayer supplication with thanksgiving make your request known to God let me break it down here. Paul here is trying to tell us that there are two actions that can happen you can choose to be anxious you can choose to worry or you can choose to pray basically if you worry, then that means you have the capacity to pray. May I put it this way? One is the antithesis of the other. By the mere fact that you can worry, that means you can pray. So you have to make the choice. Do I worry or do I pray? So for many of us, we want to do both at the same time. But you cannot do it. So that's why he says, don't be anxious about anything. But you prayer and supplication with thanksgiving make your request known to God. So on one extreme you have worrying and accept on the other extreme you have prayer, you have supplication and you have thanksgiving. Which brings us to the question that you need to ask yourself as an individual. Do I worry more or do I pray more? And that is where you have to come to. But as a servant of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the heart of a servant is a prayerful heart. Don't be anxious. Pray. Don't worry. Pray. A story is told. And I know you have may heard this story before. Of this man who was working in an office. And every day he went to the office. He carried this worried look. Now one day he walks into the office. And he's excited. So his friends can't help but notice his countenance. So they come and ask him what happened. You have been worrying so much. He said, yeah, I found the solution. I found somebody whom I'm going to pay. And that person is going to carry all my worries. So I don't have to worry. He's going to do all the worrying for me. And this is very liberating. 
age on a gym where they pay. So they ask him, how much are you paying him? He said, I'm going to pay him five thousand dollars. Then they said, but you don't earn five thousand dollars. He said, no. Actually, what I'm going to pay him, I'm not going to worry about. Let him worry about that as well. Let me drive the point home. Our worries, we don't even have to pay anybody. Calvary. Calvary was the solution for our worries. If we can take our burdens, we can take our anxiety, if we can take our worries to the cross, in prayer, our burdens will be lifted. We will be set free. We don't have to pay anything for it. Why? Because what characterizes a servant of the gospel is a prayerful heart. Is a heart that does not consistently worry. Because the cross took care of our worries. What else characterizes a true servant of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Verse 10. Paul continues. Making requests, if by some means now at last I may find my way in the will of God to come to you. What is Paul trying to say here? He says, I want to come to Rome. I haven't been able to come to Rome as yet. But within God's will, I want to come to Rome. He is putting everything. And surrendering it to the will of God. So this is a submissive heart. A heart that has been submitted to God's will. That is what the psalmist talks about. He says, I desire to do your will, oh my God. Your law is within my heart. You see, frequently I met a lot of people who ask the question, what is God's will for my life? And often my response is, you are asking the wrong question. And often you look at them and say, why am I asking the wrong question? You see, you are asking the wrong question because you are adding my life. So you are focusing on your life. The focus should not be on my life. The focus should be on God's will. So the true question we should be asking is what is God's will? So once God's will has been established, then you and I align our lives to fulfill or to meet that will of God. See, that's the big point. Because then God's will becomes the focus and then we take your life and bring your life and connect it to God's will. You see, I've met a lot of people who say God's will is done everywhere. That's not the truth. When you read the Bible, you will discover that there are forces that act against God's will. Even the Lord himself taught us how to pray. And the pattern he gave us, when we read Matthew chapter 5 and verse 10, he says, your will will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Now, this is, let me put it for you in perspective. Even where God's will is not done, all 
all things will work together for for good. Everything will work together to meet God's purpose. But as a servant of God, you should have a heart that is submissive to the will of God. The next character that you should have as a servant of the gospel is found in verse 11. Here Paul says in verse 11 for I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts so that you may be established. What is Paul trying to say? Paul says I long to see you. I want to come to you because I I have something to give. There is something that has been given to me that I want to live with you. And the reason I'm giving it to you is that you may be established. He is coming to Rome, not to take away from what the Romans have. He is coming to add to what they already have. He says, I'm coming, in verse 12, he says, I'm coming to encourage you. So he's coming so that their faith together, they can encourage one another. This is in sync with what Paul later says. When we read Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20 and verse 35, Paul makes an assertion of something we don't see anywhere in the gospel. He says, the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now when we read the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we don't see that have spoken expressly by Jesus Christ. But here Paul tells us that this is what he commanded. The blessing comes when we give. And that brings us to the question for many of us that congregate, do you go to give? Or do you go to get? That is a test of your heart. As a servant of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because over the years, I've met many people who drop out of church. And often when you ask them, what, what, what happened? Why aren't you in church anymore? And what you hear is things like, I, I don't get anything from there. I, I, I don't... I, I don't get anything from the praise and worship. I, I, I don't get anything from the word that is preached. So basically, that is a selfish mindset. If I may put it that way, that stinks of one word, selfishness. You see, it is not what we get. It is more blessed to give. It is what we give. And for many the people, when we talk about giving, within the context of congregation. Our mindset draws to money. And so now pastor is talking about giving money in charge. Yes, we need to give money to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's just part of our giving. But we gather to give so many things. 
Tukunga ku we gather to give praise and worship to our Lord and God. Tukunga no kuleto kuwayo kweba zano kusize ni mukama katonda wafi. We gather to give encouragement to one another. Tukunga no kuzama amanyi buliomu. We gather to give help to one another. Tukunga na tuyambagane. We gather to give friendship to one another. Tukunga na tuzimbe mikwano. We gather to give strength to one another. Tukunga no kuzama amanyi. Whatever it is that people need, we gather to give it to them. That is what Paul is trying to state here. And he says that you may be established. Established is the word sterizo. Sterizo would mean so that together, we can be strengthened. Together we can be resolute facing in a particular direction. Together we can be steadfast. So as saints of God, as servants of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, we need to be characterized by a giving heart. The fifth quality we need to have is the quality of persistence. Look at what he says in verse 13. He says now, I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often plan to come to you, but was hindered until now that I may have some fruit among you also, just as amongst other Gentiles. What is Paul trying to say here? Remember, he has not been to Rome. He has planned to go to Rome. He's basically saying, I plan for this many times. But circumstances have connived and have not been able to accomplish. But I have not given up on this dream. I will come to you. And he did get to Rome. But it was not something that went that went right at the first try. You see, so many things will conspire. But what God wants to cultivate in us is a persistent heart. A true servant of the gospel needs to be persistent. For, consider, look at what happens. When Paul wrote this letter, he was in Corinth on his third missionary journey. When you read the accounts in the book of Acts, you will discover that from Corinth, he did go to Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, he was arrested. For the next two years, he was a prisoner in Caesarea. And he finally did get to go to Rome. But he did not go to Rome as a missionary. He went to Rome as a prisoner. Now look at this. See Paul in chains arriving in Rome. This is what he had prayed for. And he said, praise the Lord. Finally I'm here. I'm here, here I am. I told you I would get here. Here I am. Even though I'm a prisoner. But finally I am in Rome. You see, God does not promise us. In what states? He doesn't promise how. But he promises that he will get us. There. He promised him to get to Rome. To preach the gospel in Rome. He did get to Rome. But he got to Rome as a prisoner. 
along the way a lot of things happened. They were met by a storm. God told him they will all be safe. But he did not tell him how they would get safe. They lost all the property. They lost the ship. They arrived wet. Some were swimming. Some were holding on to planks of wood. But God had had promised that they would be safe. And they arrived safely. So it is the same with us. Sometimes we get paralyzed by the details. But God has given us the word. You shall arrive to where God has destined you to go. This is what he says in Galatians chapter 6. Verse 9. He says, Let us therefore not grow weary in doing good. For at a proper time, we will reap a harvest. And this is the key. If we do not give up, we need to be a people who don't give up. Let me ask a question. Have you been forced lately to give up? in any given area of service to God. As a servant of the gospel, there will be moments when you feel like giving up. But giving up is the easy thing. Giving up is not godly. Throwing in the towel is not God's mandate for your life. The promise is don't grow well keep doing good there is a proper time when you harvest when everything you have worked for will be rewarded because that is what God has promised the next final characteristic that we see of the servant of the gospel of Jesus Christ is found in verse 14. Paul writes and says, I am indebted both to the Greeks and to the non-Greeks. Both to the wise and to the foolish. In some versions, they use the word obligated. The, the Greek word that is used there is the word of Philetis. Of Philetis looks at something like a financial debt. And Paul here says, I am indebted to the Greeks, but I am also indebted to the barbarians. Now, the Greeks, these were the cultured people of society. These were the people who were sophisticated, they were the educated. Now, the barbarians, this was a, a class of people that were on the other extreme. They were not cultured. Their speech betrayed them. They, they, they were not educated. They were not as sophisticated. Actually, in the Greek, this was a derogatory word that was used for them. It is because when the Greek had them speak, they said when they had them, all they had were words like ba 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 ba. So that's why they called them the barbarians. But Paul here says, I, I 
am obligated to those who are educated and cultured. But I'm also obligated. I'm also indebted to those who are not educated. Why is that so? Because everybody needs the gospel of Jesus Christ. Whichever part of society you come from, you need the gospel of Jesus Christ. Therefore, as a servant of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you need to have the body a heart for the people irrespective of their status in society and that is what should carry forward so today we did see what characterizes a servant of the gospel and number one we talked about that the first quality is being grateful you need to have a grateful heart the second character is prayerfulness we need to be a prayerful people not a worrying people the third character is submissiveness and submissiveness to the will of God. Number four is being a giving people. One with a giving heart. Having the attitude of giving. Number five is persistence. Not giving up easily. Hanging in there. Going on until the very end. Number six is the heart of indebtedness. Feeling the burden, the obligation to preach this gospel unto all creatures. With those six, we see Paul's heart. With those six, the torch is now turned to you to reflect on this truth and then ask the Holy Spirit to speak concerning those areas of your life where you need many where you need correction where you need refinement that you may be a vessel in the house of the Lord an honorable vessel may God bless you as you yield your hearts and allow the Holy Spirit to change you. Let's pray. Father of grace, Father of glory, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for your word. Today, Lord, I pray that you turn the light of your word and as we allow our spirits to be illuminated by this truth. May you search every heart, Lord. May you help us, King of Glory, for all those areas where we have come short. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. May we start again, Lord, with the hearts that are tuned to you, Lord, with hearts that characterize a true servant of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Bless your people, Lord, as they take the steps to get forward to align to your will. And we bless and thank you in Jesus' name. And God's people say, Amen. Amen.
I cannot leave without giving an opportunity to somebody who has never received the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior in your life. This is your moment. Why don't you say this word? Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. That gift is available to you right now. Receive it and he will make the difference in your life. Both now and for all eternity. Just say these words from the bottom of your heart. Say the God of heaven, the creator of the universe, the creator of mankind, I come to you today I believe and I know that I am a sinner. I need a savior in my life. And there is only one savior. And his name is Jesus. Christ the son of the living God. I believe that he died for sinners. Like you. Today. I receive by faith what he died for me to receive. Save me, Lord. Write my name in the book of life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to live for you both now and forever. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. If you have said that prayer, from the bottom of your heart. By faith, you are now saved. There is that number on the screen. Please call it. Somebody will pick it up and talk to you. Give you the first instructions in the faith. Get steadily, get ready for this wonderful journey. A journey without regrets. A journey where your heart will be changed and we characterize everything we have said concerning the heart of the true servant of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. From the church, we say it's an honor and a blessing to have you. And until we meet again, may God richly bless you. Shalom.